ABC. WBUP Ishpeming. Tonight on your Upper Great Lakes News Network, the Marquette area is ringing in the sky with fireworks after lots of preparation and some outside financial help. And a Marquette County man is on his way to prison after receiving his sentence today for child sexual assault. The UGN Late News starts right now. Coming to you live from our studios in Marquette, it's UGN, the Upper Great Lakes News Network. Well, it may be a day later than some of us would like, but the sky above Marquette is sparkling with 4th of July fireworks. Good evening and welcome to the UGN Late News. I'm Mike Hoy. Well, before Marquette could light up the night this evening, a lot of preparation work had to be done, and UGN's Lara Salahi took a look this afternoon at how the city was getting ready. Pyrotechnicians are drilling and strapping together close to 1,500 rockets that are set to shoot off or bridge in Marquette tonight. After residents complained that last year's fireworks show was too small, donations have doubled to make sure this year's fireworks will be a blast. Marquette's annual fireworks show relies on money donated by the people of Marquette, not the city tax. This year, residents have donated $25,000 for the fireworks show, more than double the amount raised last year. Tonight, I expect we're going to see a fireworks display that for sure largest that Marquette's ever seen. Bruce Tyree, Vice President of Great Lakes Fireworks in Lower Michigan, promises to deliver to everyone at Lower Harbor Park tonight. As with any fireworks, you're going to see lots of colors, of course lots of noise. I can't give away all the secrets or it wouldn't be a surprise. Pyrotechnicians have spent about two days for a show that's only expected to be about 25 minutes long. At the Ore Dock, Lara Salahi, UGN News. Thanks, Laura, and I can hear those fireworks booming overhead outside right now. If you're able to see them, I definitely hope that you're enjoying them. Well, an Ishpeming man who recently admitted to sexually assaulting his stepdaughter is heading to prison for at least the next two and a half years. 50-year-old Michael Tarvinen will be behind bars for at least 32 months and possibly the maximum sentence of 15 years. He received that sentence this afternoon. Tarvinen was arrested back in January and he was originally charged with two counts of first-degree criminal sexual conduct with a child under 13 and a second-degree count. He pleaded guilty in late May to the second-degree charge, telling circuit court at that time that he had inappropriately touched his stepdaughter over a one-year period. In exchange for that guilty plea, the first-degree CSC charges against him were both dropped. And the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality has a new report out on Kennecott Minerals' proposed nickel and copper mine on Marquette County's Yellow Dog Plains. It's an independent third-party report about the stability of the proposed mine's roof. Earlier this year, the DEQ gave preliminary approval for the Eagle Mine project, but it later withdrew that approval because documents criticizing the roof's stability had not been included in public record. Those documents dealt with how the Salmon Trout River watershed directly above would be affected if the roof somehow became compromised. Kennecott officials say they're pleased with the new report, but mine opponents say it leaves too many questions and has very little new information. If you want to look at the report, though, you can find it on the DEQ's website, which is www.michigan.gov slash documents slash DEQ, that web address on your screen. Once it's had a chance to review this new report, the DEQ is going to give updates in the next few weeks on where the Eagle Mine permit stands. The city of Ishpeming is looking for a new person to lead its Main Street program. Former director Jennifer Thume recently took a new job in Chocolate Township, so the city's downtown development authority is looking for a new Main Street manager that it plans to hire sometime next month. Ishpeming's DDA is going to take applications th through next Wednesday, and it's the Main Street director's responsibility to work with business owners and the state of Michigan to help bring people and money into the city's downtown. And the city says if you're interested, you can contact the Downtown Development Authority at City Hall by calling that number on your screen, 485-1091. And one of the service offices at a local hospital is opening itself up to public view as a companion to a local historical exhibit. Marquette General Hospital's Health and Information Center is having an open house next Tuesday. That's in conjunction with the Changing the Face of Medicine exhibit at the Peter White Library, which you can see here. 
that Health Information Center is a place where anyone can find information on medical procedures, diseases, and wellness issues, among other things. The traveling exhibition, which is at the library right now, will be there until early August, and it spotlights the contributions American women have made and are still making to the field of health care. And also, still coming up tonight, a different area hospital is about to start celebrating the new facility that it's soon going to build. Plus, a group of local women that keeps their Thursdays colorful gets to show off their work to the Marquette area. But before that, a look at some of tonight's winning state lottery numbers. Stay with us because the UGN Late News will be right back. Michigan Lottery's Mega Millions. Welcome back to the UGN Late News. A group of local women painters is hoping to attract area attention with a month-long exhibit of their artistic creations. The group is called the Thursday Painters, and it's been around continuously in the Marquette area since 1953. The women are always looking for people interested in painting to come and join them. And what they do is they work together. Sometimes they have special um, projects for exhibits. They critique each other's work and one of the items it featured in this exhibit is a quilt that was done by one of the members, I believe, Rosemary Glenn, and they all painted um, their version of the quilt. And the Thursday painters will get to show off all of their work, including that quilt and various renditions of it, at the Marquette Arts and Culture Center all month long. And it features um, landscapes as well as the title, Outside Looking In, shows um, perspective painting from of looking into a storefront to looking into a home and looking through the windows. That exhibit is in the lower level of the Peter White Library and there was also a free reception at the library for the Thursday Painters tonight. Well, Bell Hospital is going to break ground on its new home in the next couple of weeks and the hospital is going to start celebrating that upcoming construction this weekend. They're having a special presentation at 5 p.m. Sunday at Peterson Auditorium in Ishpeming and the $5 tickets for that presentation can be bought at the hospital at Jubilee Foods, Range Bank branches and also right at the door. Bell is going to be moving from South 4th Street to just north of US 41 in Ishpeming, right behind the Jubilee Food Store. And they're due to break ground there later this month, and the new hospital is scheduled to open its doors in the fall of 2008. Bell Hospital's current home dates back to 1975, and there have been plans to get that new facility built for a number of years. Well, looking to international news for a moment, there is more news today of cyber terrorism coming out of Britain. As you've likely heard, last week a group of medical professionals tried to set off a series of car bombs in the UK, but today word came out of another plot being circulated, this time on the internet, to have Muslim doctors wage jihad in the US. And those details emerged as the men who ran that website were sent to prison. ABC's Jim Shudo has more. Today, these three men became the first in Britain to be sentenced for using the internet to incite terrorism. Their website, called Terrorist 007 in Arabic, was a sort of MySpace for terrorists, with chat rooms and videos dedicated to anti-Western hate and violence. This is one of the videos posted, a chilling appeal to young Muslims to join holy war against the West. This web is going to be used against Europe. Of the many plots discussed on the site was one posted in February 2005, suggesting using doctors to attack the U.S., echoing the doctor's plot this week in Britain. We are 45 doctors, it read, and we're determined to take the battle inside America. Some of the possible targets raised, the USS John F. Kennedy, based in Florida, an unspecified army base in Virginia, and the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. U.S. and British officials say there is no evidence this was ever an organized plot or that the plotters were ever inside America. Still, the case highlights how terrorists exploit the Internet as a weapon. Internet terrorism is actually the powerhouse of terrorist recruitment. It's, it's the growth place for terrorism, and particularly for the 15 to 25-year-olds. So that is pretty easy to get onto. Yeah, very easy. Glenn Genvey has spent several years infiltrating extremist Islamic websites. Today, we visited some of them ourselves and easily found threatening rhetoric and terrorist know-how, such as how to build a car bomb. It's real. They're not messing around just with words. They're not playing. If they could hurt 
British or American people, they would. And that was ABC's Jim Shudo. He also reports that the Muslim community in Britain has taken out newspaper ads condemning last week's attempted bombings. And the group paying for the ads is made up largely of doctors, saying as well that criminal plots should not be linked to the teachings of Islam. And still to come tonight on your Upper Great Lakes News Network, Bays Danak and Escanaba Harbor are gearing up for a large and lucrative fishing tournament. But first, your full forecast with Monica Ott. Weather is next on the UGN Late News. Yeah, you could say I'm a quitter. I finally quit smoking. It was the smartest thing I've ever done. There was always a reason to put it off. And then a friend told me about 1-800-QUIT-NOW. 1-800-QUIT-NOW. They gave me a quit coach to help make a real plan. They were there for me as long as it took. And it was free. Free. I'm a quitter. I'm a quitter. You know what? You can be too. Mild but a little stormier early this afternoon. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Monica Ott. Temperature wise, not too bad, very hot for Iron Mountain. 80 degrees at the moment, 75 over in Ironwood, so not too bad. 73 here in Marquette. Degree cooler for Escanaba with their 72 degree temperature at the moment. Warm for Manistique, 79 at the moment, but 20 degrees cooler up in the Keweenaw Peninsula in Copper Harbor. It's also very windy all across the UP. We're looking at a sustained wind between about 10 and 15 miles per hour, all the way from Iron Mountain up through Copper Harbor. Not too bad as you head into the uh, middle of the UP. We're looking at less than 10 mile per hour uh, sustained winds. And as for the Sioux, pretty windy for them as well. 10 mile per hour sustained winds. They're looking at gusts, not too bad, about 11 miles per hour. And as for the rest of the UP, not terrible in terms of uh, those gusting wind speeds. We had some very uh, high gusting winds earlier today associated with those uh, frontal systems that marched on through. 15 mile per hour gusts at the moment here in Marquette, 16 mile per hour gusts in Iron Mountain and pretty windy up in Copper Harbor with their uh, 18 mile per hour gusts. It's also very humid, so feeling pretty sticky out there. 77% humidity for Copper Harbor at the moment. Not too bad for Iron Mountain, only 38% humidity for them. 73% humidity for Escanaba, so it's been a pretty uh, hot and humid day for some locations. But at least we've seen the end of the severe weather, at least for the uh, next couple of days. You can see the entire lower peninsula is blanketed in severe thunderstorm watches and warnings, expecting a large hail and damaging winds for them. But around here, we're just looking at a few more sprinkles into the overnight hours. But other than that, the worst is definitely over. The satellite picture showing us that we did have a few of those thicker clouds earlier today associated with that falling rain. But for the most part, not too bad. Even some locations saw a bit of sunshine today. And those temperatures warmed up quite a bit. As for the rest of the country, it was a pretty active day for yet another day, especially uh, down towards the Gulf Coast. They just can't get rid of all of that rain, especially into portions of Texas. And you notice there are some very strong storms, especially uh, through Louisiana and that front. And that precipitation is extending all the way up towards the East Coast. And around here, we're seeing a few more uh, scattered showers, even some strong storms as we head into the lower portion of the state of Michigan. That cold front is extending well down into the Gulf with a very strong low pressure system. We've seen those uh, storms right along that cold front throughout the day. That low finally moves out and that cold front has pushed further or far enough into uh, towards the East Coast that we're going to be seeing some more dry weather as we head into the next couple of days. But early Sunday and into the next week, we're looking at some more showers. So the wet weather has not come to an end, or at least for now it has, but it won't be sticking around for long. In terms of the uh, temperatures all around the country, it was a very hot day, especially around the Great Plains with temperatures topping out near 90, even at the moment, very hot, 86 for Des Moines, 85 for Sioux Falls, as well as Bismarck, a little closer to home, 73 for Green Bay, 84 in Chicago. 72 down in Alpena, so pretty warm all around the region. Here in Marquette, we topped out at 77, so just a couple of degrees above normal for this time of year. Into the overnight, no more rain, partly cloudy with a low down to 60. Winds will be out of the northwest at 5 to 10. And for tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high topping out at 77. Winds will be out of the northwest at 5 to 10. Looking ahead to the next couple of days, dry again on Saturday with a high of 70. And then temperatures jump 10 degrees for Sunday along with some falling rain that will last all the way into next Wednesday.
Thanks, Monica. And I uh, have to say those booms that uh, we in our studio here in Marquette just heard outside and above us uh, during Monica's forecast, fortunately are not any sort of booms of thunder. They're booms of Marquette's fireworks. Good to see that that thunder and potential rain for the early part of next week isn't here. Just